Hello, uh, we've already seen um, how to use sklearn to compute a fit line uh, using the least squares method. Now I'm going to talk about uh, another way to use gradient scent uh, as an alternative to solving the same, the same problem. And well, how are we going to do that? Well, previously in the last uh, video, we were optimizing two variables at once, x and y, and uh, trying to find the best values for those uh, in order to minimize a function f. Now, instead of x and y, the two variables we're going to be trying to um, optimize are the slope and intercept for our line. And uh, the function that we're going to be working with is going to be giving us the, um, the mean squared error for that particular slope and intercept. Um, now, it turns out that this is actually a common approach. If you head over to sklearn, um, you'll see, well, we have the linear regression we've been doing. And they also have this one, this SGD regressor. And um, SGD stands for Stochastic Gradient Descent. The stochastic part, um, I'm not going to talk much about it. It just means that um, there's some randomness involved, uh, kind of around sampling. And, um, and, and so there's a chance I'll get different answers different times, but it's going to be a lot faster. Uh, the Gradient Descent Angle is what I'm really interested in. And rather than using this thing directly, um, we're going to be doing it ourselves using uh, PyTorch just to kind of understand how how this is working to find this uh, this slope and this intercept, but in practice you'd probably use something like this. So why why is it useful to have these two different things for doing the same for solving the same problem? And, and the answer is well, this is kind of um, computing it more directly, um, and uh, and it works well when you don't have many columns. But if you have a lot of columns of data, then this linear regression can actually go very slowly, and solving it with gradient descent is going to be uh, much more efficient. Right, so that's why. You have to kind of think, well, how many columns do I have? And then, and then kind of intelligently choose the right one. Or, you know, better yet, try both and see which is faster. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to be doing this in PyTorch. And so I, I, I've kind of set us up nicely here. I have this data frame. And, um, and well, let me just look at the scatter plot first. I, I should be able to easily fit a line to that. And so I have my x values, x column, my y column. And you can see I'm already setting us up with this ones column um, uh, that we're going to have to be dealing with. Okay, so how are we going to go about doing this? Well, we're ultimately going to have to do some very similar stuff to last time. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this code uh, that we had last time. And, um, and let, me, let me just kind of start by renaming a bunch of variables so that it's clear what's going on. So this time we want to be solving for some coefficients, right? And the coefficients um, are going to be like this. It's going to have the slope and the intercept. Right, that's what I want to solve for. Um, I'm considering both of these coefficients. And uh, I'm not trying to do all this history stuff, so let me clean up this a little bit from last time. I don't need any of that. Uh, this is changing, right? I don't need any of that. I'm going to have this bare bones um, optimization. And um, well, let, me, let me just try to have every place I had x, y. Let me actually have this. And OK. And, um, and so it's not really clear what f and z are yet, but this, whatever it is, it's going to be minimizing z. And so when we're doing a least squares fit, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to minimize the error, right? So we're uh, minimizing the error. So this function f, it better be something that takes in the coefficients and then tells me for those coefficients, you know, the coefficients describe a line, those coefficients, well, what is the error? Um, relative to the scatter data. Let me actually rename this. I'm going to rename it a mean squared uh, error. Um, and let's just keep it short. I'm just going to call it MSC, mean squared error. And, uh, and let's define that thing. All right, so um, I'm going to have my um, mean squared error, and I'm going to take in these coefficients. And, um, and, and what I want to do is, well, I want to compare uh, the predicted y values to the actual y values, and that's going to be based on the data. So you know what I'm going to have to do to set things up a little bit here is I'm going to have to kind of pull these out into tensors, right? So what I want to do is I want to pull out um, these columns into um, an A matrix that's represented as a, as a tensor, and then these y's as well, right? So I head down here. And, um, and I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to say uh, A equals data frame. And uh, of those columns, I have my X column and my ones column. 
And, um, and I want to convert that to a tensor, right? So I can do my multiplications later. And, um, and if I run this right now, it's actually not going to work because uh, we cannot convert directly from a data frame to a tensor, but I can, I can convert a data frame to NumPy to a tensor. So this will actually work just fine. Well, or so I thought, um, if I, if I can actually spell it correctly. Um, so as so I have that, maybe, maybe let me just peek at that for now. Um, I can see I'm trying to pull out those values to that tensor. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to get, well, what are those Y values, right? So I want to get the Y values like this and, um, just like, so maybe I'll just peek at those for a moment. And, um, and that's good as well. Can I just double check that quickly? 6.1, 1.8. Okay, great, 6.1, 1.8. So that looks good, right? So I'm kind of pulling those things out to tensors, uh, which is going to let me actually do my um, optimization soon. And um, and just to be consistent, right? So there's multiple kinds of floating types. And if I don't have the same type for a Y and uh, coefficients, this is going to be a no-go, right? So let me just make sure that all my types are going to play well together, um, like so. I have that. And um, okay, well, what do I need to do? All right, I have my data here, and I want to compare um, my y values to what I predict if I if I kind of put these coefficients against this matrix, right? So, well, how can I do that? Well, uh, uh, I have my matrix A, and I'm going to take the dot product with my um, coefficients. And right now, right to kind of get the shapes right, um, you know, it's like this one-dimensional thing, but I want a vertical uh, vector. Right, so we haven't done this for a while, but we have to reshape this. And um, I don't care how many rows, but I have one column, right? So I can do this, right? So that's um, that's drawing through this vector, right? Let me let me just try and look at this again, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go column by column, right? And, and I'm going to multiply my coefficients by this, and my coefficients by this, and my coefficients by this, and get an answer each time. Uh, for what I'm predicting for my y, right? And, and of course, my coefficients are slope and intercept, right? So I'm basically doing that calculation line by line on the data, and this is what I'm predicting, right? That's what I predict. And um, okay, well, I have to do this final step, right? So I know what the truth is, and I know what's being predicted if I use these coefficients. And, um, and comparing this to this is maybe enough to tell me what the mean squared error is. Right, so how can I do that? Well, I can take this minus y. So that's the error. The squared error is that. And then finally, I can get the mean. Right? Do, do you see, see how I pulled that out? The mean squared error. Right? That's exactly what this does. Right? One letter is, each, is a different part of this calculation. And I'm going to return that thing. And, um, and so this is good now, right? Because, right, I'm trying to find whatever coefficient give me the smallest mean squared error. Right, and this is kind of a harder function to optimize now, right? It's a, it requires this big matrix uh, calculation and actually calling this uh, is a lot of work, right? Because I have to do a computation per, um, per data point. Uh, but that doesn't matter, even though this is a much more complicated function than what we've seen before, um, this approach is still gonna minimize it. Um, the gradient is still going to tell us if making my coefficients uh, bigger or smaller is going to make my mean squared error uh, bigger or smaller. And this is going to, it just it turns out that this is a convex function, right? So this is maybe one of those ones that we can, uh, we can solve, right? There's not multiple local minima. Okay, so I think, I think we're good. Um, let's, um, let's just test it, right? I should sanity check it, right? What if I pass in uh, something like this? They pass in um, slope is zero and and uh, and um, slope is zero and intercept is zero. So that's not very good. Now, what I know the right answer is is that the slope is negative two, and um, and the intercept is twenty. And I actually see when I do that, well, I have a very small error, right? So it seems like I've done this correctly. Okay, so sanity check aside, let's actually try to um, compute this thing, and then when I'm done, uh, see what the what these values are, right? Try to look at what the coefficient is. I do that, and um, 
And, uh, and, and you know what? I'm kind of getting these very large values, and that's kind of a classic sign that uh, I'm trying to learn too fast. It's bouncing around. We've seen that before. Let me slow this down a little bit. And so slowing down a bit. And, and the problem with slowing it down a bit is that maybe it's not getting to the correct answer soon enough. So let me, let me kind of crank up these iterations and do this. And um, now I can actually see that I'm, I'm kind of getting something reasonable uh, with a learning rate of 100th and 1,000 iterations. Then I can get to pretty close to what I was expecting, negative 2 slope and 20 for the intercept. 